Hello, May class, and welcome to your next English lesson. In today's lesson, we are going to be creating a toolkit of everything that we need when we are writing an instructional text. So please make sure that you have your pencils, your pieces of paper, a ruler, um, or if you're using your whiteboards, your whiteboards, your whiteboard pens and a ruler. So if you don't have that, uh, pause the video now and go and get that, please. So our objective today is, can I construct a toolkit for writing instructions? So we're going to read through this together. Um, what I would like you to do while we're reading it is on your whiteboards, just from face value, and by face value, I mean just what you can see when you're writing instructions, write down any features that pop out to you that you think may be important. How to build an empire. Are you interested in building your own empire? Do you lie in your bed dreaming of ruling over a kingdom? Do you see yourself conquering tribes and building a coliseum? Do you see yourself? Um, if so, the likelihood is that you are destined to be a powerful ruler. Do not despair. Help is at hand. Building an empire is not as hard as you think. Read these step-by-step -step instructions and soon you too could be the ruler of a powerful empire. What you will need. You'll need an army, land, weapons, shields and good walking shoes. What you have to do. First, you should carefully train your army in the art of warfare. Secondly, you must bravely lead an army across the sea to a new land. After that, fiercely invade the lands, plundering and murdering those in your way. Now, you must make sure that you de defeat anyone that tries to stand in your way. Rule over your kingdom proudly. An important note, please remember, in order for your empire to run smoothly, it needs a strong leader. A common issue that these leaders face is the threat of unexpected death. Try your best to avoid this and rule fairly over your people, otherwise, you might, you may be assassinated. Okay, so if I'm looking at this just um, from face value, just by looking at it, without paying any attention to what's in the text, I can already see that we've got some sections. So we've got paragraphs, we've got bullet points. So we've got the little dots, we've got the numbers, we've got subheadings, we've got a heading, we've got our punctuation, we've got, um, it all neatly laid out. There's some spaces between each one of our paragraphs. And that's just what I can see from just looking at it. So did you find any of those things? Right, so we've just discussed what we noticed about what we saw. And then if we go, it says not just what it looks like, but what goes into it. So looking a little bit deeper into it, maybe you mentioned that we've got rhetorical questions. Maybe you remembered um, the shortened uh, sentences for um, making more of an impact. Maybe you noticed the fronted adverbials. Right, so we're going to go into it a little bit more. So we're going to create a toolkit of everything that goes into instructions. When we just look at the instructions without reading them, we notice the following things. We can see a title. We can see paragraphs. We can see subheadings. We can see lists. So there is a list of things that you will need. We can see steps. So it's the steps are numbered one, two, three, four, five. And something that isn't in that one, but you often find in instructions as well, is that they will often include a diagram or an illustration of what you are talking about. When we begin to read the text, 
and we look a little bit more in depth into it, into the sentences. So we're looking at sentence level things. We find the following features. So we look at the fact that it is written in the second person point of view. So we have done um, points of view before. Um, we look at the fact that we use imperative verbs. We look at adverbs of time. It's in chronological order. We use technical vocabulary. We use bullet points or numbering or both. And there's also rhetorical questions and short snappy sentences, which I haven't put there, but is something <laughs> that we also discussed. So I'm gonna go in the next slide, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into some of these things. So we have our title at the top. So if you look on the right-hand side there, I've actually labeled the title. It's um, the little red box. It was also then broken up into paragraphs. And in the little yellow thing there, you can see that I've said that you've got an introductory paragraph, which usually asks questions and wants the reader to read more. So that will introduce the reader to the topic that we're talking about, and then it will expand into getting them excited to read it, which is why we use the rhetorical questions that we have a little bit later on, the short sentences, um, it makes you want to read more, it makes you want to think, it makes you want to read on to see how to do that. We have subheadings. The subheadings are obviously not the main heading. The main heading is how to build an empire. And the subheadings are then obviously the, the paragraphs underneath. We have what you will need, we have what you have to do, and an important note. So the main heading tells you about what the entire set of instructions is going to be about. The subheadings tell you what that little paragraph or that little block of information is going to be about specifically. We have um, a list. So the list, like I mentioned, is a list of things you are going to need to build an empire. So in this one, you are going to need an army, you're going to need land, you're going to need weapons, you're going to need shields, you're going to need good walking shoes. So those are the a list of things that you are going to need to be able to do your, um, to be able to complete that task and to build an empire. We also then have steps and these very importantly need to be in chronological order. In our hook lesson and um, in our hook lesson, we discussed a little bit, you would have seen that when you are taking part in instructions or you're doing what instructions are telling you to do, it is important that you do them in order because otherwise it doesn't make sense. So if I, for example, was to make a jam sandwich, first I would need to get all my ingredients. Then I would need to get bread and a knife. <laughs> Sorry, I've got all my ingredients. Then I would need a knife. I would need to open up the, the, the jam. I would need to put my knife into the jam. I'd have to pull it out again and then put the jam onto the bread, the jam that's on the knife on the bread. If I don't do that in order, I'm not going to be able to complete that task. It's going to go very wrong. And as you saw from my example in the hook lesson, if I didn't put my, my hood on properly, it didn't make sense. So I need to make sure that it was done in the correct order for me to be able to complete that task. So they need to be in chronological order. And we do this by using our adverbs of time to tell us in what order they are in. And you can also see that the steps are numbered. So even then I can follow the numbering. I can go one, two, three, four, five. There's no point in me starting with four because I need to do the first thing first and then the next one and then the third one and then the fourth one. Sometimes obviously it has diagrams or illustrations about what you're talking about. It is in the second person point of view. We have discussed this before. The first person is I, we. The second person is you. The third person would be he, she, they. So make sure that you've got it in the second person point of view. So you need to go and do this. Then you should do this. Finally, you should do this. 
it has got imperative verbs. Now, some of you may have heard the word imperative verb before. Another word that we use for them is bossy verbs. But in year four, we're going to refer to them as imperative verbs. And these are things like train your army, uh, lead an army, invade the land, um, defeat anyone, rule over your kingdom. So it's telling them what to do. So if I was uh, going to make my bed, I would say um, pull the sheets back, smooth out the wrinkles, put the pillows in the correct place, pull up the sheet, then pull up the duvet, and finally fold back the top of the duvet, depending on how you make it. So it's those verbs that you are telling them to do something. So switch the light on, turn the kettle on, um, turn the tap on, put it on the floor. So those are our imperative verbs. As I mentioned, we use adverbs of time. Now, adverbs of time tell us obviously when something happens. So we've got first, secondly, after that, now, finally, those are adverbs of time at the front of our sentences often. And then because they are fronted adverbials, we have a comma after them. As mentioned already, the instructions are in chronological order. Technical vocabulary, now this is a bit of a difficult one in that it varies with what you're talking about. So think about the vocabulary words that we've learned in English and even the ones you've done in history. Those are technical vocabulary words that relate to the topic we are writing about. That's what that is saying. We use bullet points, we use numbering. So you can see the bullet points under what you need and then the numbering is under what you have to do. And then finally, I've said rhetorical questions. So you use rhetorical questions to make sure that the person is intrigued and they want to read more. Right, I have got three tasks for you today. Your first task is to create a toolkit for instructional writing. So when you're writing instructions, these are the features that your writing needs to have in it. Secondly, I would like you to refer back to the example, uh, so, sorry, back to the text map and find examples of the features in the text. So you need to tell me if it says title, you find me the title. If you find a subheading, you find me a subheading that goes with it. You can um, list the list, you can write the list down for me, the steps. Make sure you're giving me examples of what we have spoken about and the features that we have spoken about. Once you have done that, the final thing I would like you to do is explain why instructions are laid out in that specific way. Can you tell me why it is important that we go from our introductory paragraph to what we need to the steps and then a final conclusion or and then the diagram or whatever it is underneath it? the diagram or the illustration, sorry. So could you explain to me why it needs to be laid out in that order? Don't forget to share with us on Tapestry your work that you are doing. Um, I've been seeing quite a bit of it online already, which is really lovely to see. And so please keep sharing it with us. If there's anything that you are unsure of, so for example, if you need a bit more of an explanation of um, what imperative verbs are, please don't forget to join us in our live lesson so we can talk a little bit more about it. Um, and if you've got any other questions about it, the work on tapestry also needs to be up by four o'clock on the day that you watch the video, please. So I hope to see all of you on tapestry.